My name is Ben Kruger with Old School Manufacturing. We're going to make a short little video clip here of uh, how to install a front three point on a tractor. Um, every tractor model may look just a little bit different, but the principle stays the same, uh, with the exception of the John Deere 2.4, which would be your 8R series John Deere tractors. Uh, anywhere from a 8030 series John Deere all the way up into the new 8R series John Deere tractors. Um, those would have a little bit different setup, but the principle is still very much the same. We utilize and use the um, weight bracket of the tractor itself, and we simply hang the three-point on the front of it. There are instructions supplied with it, but we thought a video clip may help you. You'll notice that we fast forward through certain parts of it, but make sure to slow it back down and explain what we're doing to the um, you know, in the more pertinent parts of it. So at this point, we've already removed part of the bolts on our weight bracket, uh, but just for example, we went ahead and, and left uh, part of those bolts in there so that we can kind of show you what's going on. So we've got our cheater pipe here, by the way. This is Dalton, rising YouTube superstar, who's also known as uh, the right hand of old school man. Now you'll notice here that we have our forklift and under this, Dalton's going to jump on the forklift, I'm going to pop these last two bolts out. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to suspend this weight bracket but keep it right here next to the tractor and we'll show you why here in just a moment. Lift it up just a little bit. That's good. Okay, Dalton, come here and help me. At this point, we're going to slide the weight bracket back towards the forklift and leave about a one inch gap there. That's good. Step back so Kirk can get a picture of that. Okay, this is part E for Edward on your three point kit. Uh, this part will simply be slid between the weight bracket itself and the frame of the tractor. We will use Loctite on these bolts as we advise you guys to do as well. That's your choice. Um, this particular model has pretty long bolts in it. So uh, for the video here, we will not be replacing those. However, we do recommend changing those out and putting longer bolts back in there. Okay, so I got one bolt started here, and before we get too hossy with it, we make sure to have our one bolt started in there by a few threads. Dalton's going to get his bolt started, then we'll move the forklift out of the way. We'll get you a better picture of what's going on here. purposes, we're only going to put um, 
two bolts in the weight bracket at this time. Uh, once the video is over, we'll go ahead and put the rest of the bolts in there. But for time's sake, we're going to try to keep this short and sweet so that you guys can see how to do it and get on with your lives. So Dalton, if you'll move the forefoot out of the way, please. Okay, you can see in the video here we have our weight bracket. We have our Part E, or Edward, Part E plate back in behind there. It has our Case 2-4 symbol on it here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to get our three-point universal plate along with top hook and rear deals. We'll turn it so you can get a better view of it with the camera from the side. So this would be your three-point universal top plate. This would be your top hook. And this would be the below weight bracket stops that would go on this particular system. Once again, it's not always the same, but it is very similar in the way all of these kits look and work. As you can see, two guys can easily pick this up and carry it. We're going to hook the top of it first and let it hang. That's why we don't put our three-point arms on yet because we want to be able to handle it by hand and maneuver it into place a lot easier. Okay, next thing we'll do is get our bolts for the bottom of it, which are laying over here. Once again, we recommend using Loctite on all the bolts to make for sure that we don't have anything come loose on us during transport or during field operation. These bolts are two and a half inch long by one inch diameter bolts. Okay, what happened here is our plate over here on Dalton's side didn't drop down. It was actually sitting on the tip of our forklift. So we simply loosened that bracket up, gave it a little bit of adjustment, and allowed that plate to slide down. Um, once again, all the hole sizing is just a little bit big. That way there's some adjustment room in the system itself. Otherwise, it gets very frustrating when you have to drill those holes out. Okay. The next thing that we'll do is go ahead and tighten everything down. You'll notice that we had our top hook, which is part F on our diagram. We have our top hook on there, but we left it loose. We did not tighten that down. Once again, our below weight bracket stops here. They are on, but we did not tighten anything down. The system is designed to be put on there and then simply tighten it down, kind of like saddling a horse where you cinch it down and get everything good and tight. So we're going to tighten up a couple of bolts here just for example. And then we'll put our top hook on.
Okay, one thing I would like to mention to you is um, these are pretty much the same design on every tractor. It's going to lock and under our weight bracket here, and it's going to keep this from jumping up off of our top hook here. So it's very important, you'll have a little bit of gap there, but it's very important to not have a one inch gap here and a one inch hook here where that can jump up off there and fall off the tractor at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and put our front three point arms on now. These pins are supplied in the kit. Once again, we'll put a little bit of Loctite on them. Once again, this is light enough that two guys can pick it up and carry it. We like it that way. I like to put my knee in under it. I don't know if you can see that what Dalton and I are doing. Get one thing started. At this point, we'll go ahead and let it fall down. Hang there. We'll go ahead and start our nuts on there. <clears throat> we will get our pins for our hydraulic cylinders. Kirk, can you show them a picture of those hydraulic cylinders there? We do have those plumped in already. This will speed things up a little bit. All those instructions are in the kit. I got the wrong bolt. Did you get the wrong bolt, too? Yeah, I did. We both got the wrong bolt. But at least we think the same. We'll start our pin through there just a little bit. Grab our cylinder assembly. We've already Loctited those. We're ready to go. We'll get two more bolts here. The short ones that Dalton and I both wanted to use. Once again, put your knee, get turned right, put your knee and under it here. That way you have some ability to hold it still for yourself. Once we have everything tightened down, we now have a working front three point. <clears throat> you will notice that we already have the hydraulic hoses run on this tractor. We will show you some still shots, how we ran those and where we supported them. But in jest or in simple, we simply ran them up through beside the engine, up alongside the frame. Keep in mind, if your tire catches on them, it will tear off your hydraulic hoses. These go back to the remotes. Uh, these are supplied along with the kit. Um, one thing that I would make mention of it to you is we have one pair here, and you will notice that one hose is longer than the other. The reason being, one hose will hook onto this end of the cylinder, the other hose will hook onto this end of the cylinder. We supply those with Pioneer couplings. They simply plug in. Of course, you know, we would run these up and route them up over top or run them up through the center or something to keep them suspended up out of the weeds. But this enables you to keep your hoses on your tractor, put your weights back on if you want to, and, um, you know, use your weights in the field. At that point, you only have to take apart six bolts, one, 
two, three, four, five, one more down at the bottom. Two guys can pick that up, set it off there. If you have a skid steer or forklift, something handy, that works well too. Um, but you can keep all your hoses on your tractor. It would take you about 10 minutes to take that off and about 15 minutes to put it back on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your business. We appreciate it. Have a blessed day.